Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, Dan, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call right here on Pittsburgh CW on the Bordis and Bordis Hotline, which is 412-575-2600. You can also tweet us at KD Pomp, at Ron Cook PG. We're going to begin tonight with uh, a carryover from last time. We got a lot of calls about the Penguins. And the Penguins went back to practice today. It looks like Sidney Crosby could play tomorrow. He was on the top line. Malkin was given a maintenance day. But they are a team kind of in shambles right now. They've lost 10, 9 out of 10. It's one of the longest streaks ever since, really, if you go back 13 years when Crosby first came into the league. And they're doing it by fundamentally not playing the way they're supposed to play, which is in turn. And that's not been good either. Ron Cook, outstanding columnist with the Post Gazette and host of the Cook and Joe Show on 93.7 The Fan, is here. And you know, I, I, I often say this about pitchers sometimes in baseball, Ron. When you're a goaltender, you got to, there's going to be adjustment periods. I think the NHL has adjusted to Matt Murray. They know what he does best and what he does worst. And I think compounding that is the fact they're playing with such a loosey goosey attitude in front of them. Turnovers in their own zone, blue lines, it makes it very difficult to get any sort of cohesion on that team. Yeah, he's, he hasn't been very good, Bob. I mean, that's the bottom line this year. I don't think the Smith was so sharp last night. I go back to Murray again tomorrow night when Dallas gets here, but they got to get the goaltending thing straightened out. It's one of many issues uh, that they have facing them right now. They can't win at home. What are they, three, five, and two at home, I believe? They've lost that means three of seven, seven out right. of ten home games. They've lost. Um, they got some issues to get going, and I know it's early. I'm a big believer that this team, once the calendar turns to 2019, they tend to focus a little bit. But the way they're going, they're going to be buried in the standings before they get there. Sullivan looks totally frustrated. Um, you know, Jim Rutherford already traded away Haglin. I think he's going to stay with what he has for a while. Uh, but you can't have a 4-1 lead at home against Buffalo and lose the game. I mean, and then to talk about it afterwards, like, we got a point, at least we got a point. No. I mean, in the no old way. days, I would have said it was a horrible point. You needed two. I don't know. Uh, but I'm, I'm frustrated by two. I will caution everybody saying it is November, so there is time. Right. And we've seen this this movie before. Back when Sullivan took over for Mike Johnson, they were in, it was a Christmas time, and they were in bad shape. When Biosman took over for Terry, and it was Valentine's Day. Yep. and they So there's still a lot of time, but clearly they have some work to do. And I don't think you're going to see major trades solve anything right now. I think they have to dig deep and figure out ways to get it done. So we'll talk about that at 412-575-2600. Also, the Steelers coming off a nice win. Um, and they did it in dramatic fashion with Ben Roethlisberger leading the way. Uh, 17 for his last 22 to end the game. And there were two drops in there. Uh, they still got it done, and I was wondering today and talking to Mike Tomlin, we tape his show before he does his press conference, and I sat there and we went over these, some of these instances. Ron, I, I thought it was interesting when he or accepted a penalty after uh, a fourth and one situation, he took a holding penalty and make a third and 12 and give him a, another opportunity to get a first down. But that shows you confidence he has in his defense, number one, which wasn't necessarily there last year. And number two, I, I wondered what would have happened I think the answer is he goes for it. On the goal line, if Ben doesn't get in, they have to use a timeout. So it's fourth down, kick a field goal, you know you got overtime, or you try to win it right there. I think he would have gone for it, although he didn't say today. Well, first of all, on, on the confidence in the defense, you might remember the playoff game last year against Jacksonville. Yeah. He went for an onside kick, and the odds of getting an onside kick are not good, but he had no faith in his defense. This year, two minutes to go, he kicks it off, his defense gets him the ball back and end up winning the game. Uh, as far as going for it on fourth down, I think he would have gone for it too. And that's one of those calls, Bob. You make it, you're a genius. You don't, you get criticized. And, and I thought he had a great explanation today. He goes, I play to win, and I'm going to do what I think is best to win, and I don't care what you, 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 you or you think. I'm going to do what I think is best, and I admire him for that. Yeah, I certainly do, too. I also want to get all of you who call your opinions of last night's Rams-Chiefs game. Highest scoring game Monday night ever. First time two teams went over 50 points. It was, it was a classic in terms of uh, excitement and entertainment, 54-51. But do you like that style of football? Do you like what the NFL is trying to accomplish here? Because there were some good defensive plays even in that offensive explosion. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's 412-575-2600. Get on the line, air your opinions. Do it now. Do it live right here on Pittsburgh CW. 